run a train every 72 hours. You find that impossible or you're so addicted to the gym, then don't train any more frequently than every 48 hours. Every third day. You would start on a Monday. Take Tuesday and Wednesday off, train Thursday. Take Friday and Saturday off, train Sunday. The next week you would not work out on Monday, by the way. You would take Monday and Tuesday off, train Wednesday every 72 hours. Now, on Monday you're going to work your chest first. For your chest, you start out with a set of flat bench dumbbell flies or pack bet. You have an option there. Followed immediately by a set of close grip inclines, preferably on some kind of a guided mechanism like a Smith machine. When I say close, I mean slightly closer than shoulder width. What should be wide are not your hands, but your elbows. Your elbows should be flared back away from your torso towards your ears. Take your arm and place them out in front of you as in a wide grip bench press position. Now, without moving them, try to flex your pecs. Now, move your arms towards a close grip position, and without moving them, try to flex your pecs. Where do you get a better contraction? Closer. Also, with a guided mechanism, none of your effort or focus is diverted into coordinating and balancing the weight. All of your effort goes into moving the resistance and achieving a high-intensity contraction. In a, in a more technical, deeper scientific sense, high-intensity training is really about high-intensity muscular contractions, i.e., the harder, the more intensely that a muscle is made to contract, the greater the growth stimulation. After that chest workout, you can take a brief rest, move on, and do your back. You start out with a set of close grip palms up pull downs, followed by a brief rest. There is no superset here. There's, there's no superset unless I specify. Take a brief rest after the close grip palms up pull downs. Do a set of either bent over barbell rows. If that bothers your lower back, then use some kind of a seated machine row or one arm dumbbell rows followed by a brief rest and a set of shrugs, preferably on one of those universal type bench press machines where you can stand in the middle of the two handles. If you don't have one of those, use dumbbells. If you don't have heavy enough dumbbells, use a barbell. That's your first day's workout, only five sets total. Is that enough, you might be wondering? Well, you won't know until the next time you do that workout. How do we evaluate progress? In terms of strength increases. You will be stronger on your next workout, I can almost guarantee you with 100% certainty. You take Tuesday and Wednesday off, and on Thursday you do your shoulders and arms. For your shoulders, you do a set of dumbbell laterals or, or nautilus shoulder laterals, which is the best by far without a doubt. If you don't have the nautilus shoulder lateral, you're probably best off using dumbbells. Oh, yeah, the nautilus shoulder lateral is very good. But like any other tool, if you don't use it properly, you won't get full benefit. You've got to be very careful there and make sure that you set the seat at the right height. You set your seat on that Nautilus shoulder lateral machine so that when you look over either your left or right shoulder, you see that the center of your shoulder is in line with the center of the Nautilus cam, which will be designated by a red dot or a raised portion on the plastic. And keep your elbows as far back as you can. Write that down a lot. Keep the elbows pulled back, way back. After you do your, your laterals, you take a brief rest to move on to do your rear delts. For your rear delts, you, I would suggest if you have one available, you use the pec deck in reverse. Work your rear delts on the pec deck sitting in there backwards. Now, if you're going to use that pec deck, make sure you put your arms in there properly. The triceps should be on the pads, not the, uh, the top of the arms of the forearms. That will work your lateral deltoid again. In other words, you want your arms kind of bent downwards so your arms are parallel to the ground with your elbows and triceps against the pads. That will work your rear delt. After that, you take a brief rest, move on, and do a set of straight bar. Never do easy curl bar. A set of straight bar barbell curls. Take another brief rest. After the biceps, you move on and do a set of tricep press downs followed by dips. Two percent. Okay, that's your second day's workout. Then you take Friday and Saturday off, and on Sunday you do your legs. For your legs, you do a set of leg extensions followed immediately by a set of leg presses, superset fashion. If you have one available, and not many gyms do these days, use the vertical leg press, the one that's straight up and down. Those angled leg presses are newfangled devices.
devices, and they actually represent a step backwards in workout efficiency. But most people think if something is new, it has to be better. Then you take a brief rest, move on to a set of leg curls. Okay, after the leg curls, you take a brief rest, move on to a set of calf raises, standing calf. Now, I'm going to suggest for the next month or two, you don't do any abdominal work for the following reason. This program will at least maintain your existing abdominal condition, even improve it. I have some clients who literally complain after every tricep workout with those press downs, they have sore abs. This program is designed to marshal all of your body's energy and resources onto the side of growth and strength increases in your major muscle groups. First of all, weight selection and reps. Select a weight for each exercise that lets you do about 6 to 10 reps in reasonably strict fashion. As you grow stronger and find that you're able to do more than 10 reps, increase the weight by 10 to 20 percent or any amount you believe necessary so you're back to about 6 to 10 again. And I say about. Of course, there are going to be those workouts where you misjudge. There may be a workout, for instance, when you're doing curls, and by the eighth rep, you clearly recognize you're not going to fail at 10, but maybe 13. That's fine. The intensity is still high. As long as you go to failure, the intensity is maximum, but the forces are lower. High intensity, low force exercise can be very productive. Where you're doubtful or you're reluctant, and I know that one's going to go 8 to 12. And as a matter of fact, with leg presses, you can do 10 to 15 for sure. I have several real strong clients who are using the whole weight stack on the Nautilus leg press. Press. They're doing up to 70 reps. That's strong. Not only is it strong, but it's reflective of a tremendously conditioned athlete. I have had a couple of three guys do as many as 30 reps on the Nautilus leg extension with the whole stack, then with almost no rest. Do the leg press with 510 pounds, which is quite heavy, the different kind of a weight stack, for 70 reps. Now perform all of your reps in reasonably strict fashion. Reasonably strict fashion. Don't bounce, jerk, yank, or thrust the weights to get them started or to keep them moving. Lift, hold, and lower under control. Remember, high intensity training technically is about high intensity muscular contractions. In other words, the harder that the muscle itself is made to work, the more severe the contraction, the greater the growth stimulation. To go into detail through the whole program and give a warm, uh, let me give you, for instance, your chest. You want to be able to go from your flat bench dumbbell flies to your incline presses, already knowing that you're warmed up ready for the incline press. You want your shoulders and triceps warmed up. Start out, before you do that superset, do one set of incline presses with a light to moderate weight for seven reps. Then go do a set of warm-ups with a light to moderate set of dumbbells for the dumbbell flies. That will prepare you. Do one set of close grip palms up pull downs with a light to moderate weight. Now, you're, if you're going to do bent over barbell rows, of course, your lower back is involved. You might want to do a light warm-up for that one. Now, when you do your shoulders, when you do your dumbbell laterals, the first exercise, that will warm up your entire shoulder girdle sufficiently. You won't have to warm up for your rear delts. After your rear delts, you do one set of light to moderate curls. And you won't have to warm up for your triceps because your triceps will be warmed up sufficiently from your shoulder work. Your rear delts involve your triceps to a considerable extent. I would warm up on the leg, leg press first. You want to warm up not just your leg, so your hips and lower back. When I first started training people several years ago, I had them all doing forced reps and negative, negatives every set of every workout, and almost nobody was gaining satisfactorily. That's when I came to understand much more clearly just how demanding high-intensity training really is. That the body has a strictly limited recovery ability or adaptive capacity. You've got to be very careful. I used to use the analogy that high-intensity, heavy-duty exercise is like going out into the intense August sun. I've changed that. It's more like going out into the intense August sun with the sun 
five million miles closer to the Earth. Or even more precise, it's like jumping into, the, into a fire. It's a very intense stress. It'll warm you up, but you gotta jump right back out. Yeah, now I want you to keep a progress chart. This is very important. Remember, when you're doing this thing right, you'll be getting stronger, if not every set of every exercise, every workout, then damn near. You gotta keep a, an accurate progress chart so that I, I, you can monitor your progress and know that you're training properly. In other words, I can't guarantee you 100% that this given training protocol is exactly what you need in terms of volume and frequency. Only if there was a God could he look inside your DNA and say, you've got to train once every 59 and a half hours. Every, any more, any less will compromise your progress. We do know that the theory is universally valid. Every human being requires intense, brief, and infrequent training. What we don't know at the outset for everyone is just how brief or just how infrequent. Okay? Keep a progress chart. <laughs>